Did you know one of America's most loved presidents was taken from us on a sunny day in Dallas, Texas? Yes, it's true. Let's take a step back in time to that fateful day, the 22nd of November, 1963. Imagine a bright, sunny morning. President John F. Kennedy, full of life, was in a car, waving to the crowd that had gathered to catch a glimpse of him. His wife, Jackie Kennedy, was by his side, and they were both sharing smiles and waves with the people. It was a beautiful day, filled with cheer and excitement, but then, in a split second, everything changed. There was a loud bang, and then another. Confusion spread through the crowd. People were screaming, running, ducking for cover. It was chaos. Our beloved President Kennedy had been shot. In the car, there was panic. Jackie Kennedy was in shock, trying to understand what had just happened. The Secret Service agents were scrambling, doing their best to protect the President and his wife, but it was too late. The car rushed to the hospital, but despite the best efforts of the doctors, they couldn't save President Kennedy. He was gone, leaving the nation and the world in shock and sorrow. And so the world stood still as the news spread, President Kennedy was no more. But who could have done such a terrible thing, you might ask? Well, let's introduce you to a man named Lee Harvey Oswald. Oswald was the person who got arrested for this dreadful crime. Imagine this, a regular guy, living an ordinary life, suddenly found himself in the middle of one of the most shocking events in American history. He was caught not long after the president was shot. There he was, in police custody, the main suspect for the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. But Oswald's story doesn't end there. While in police custody, something unexpected happened. A man named Jack Ruby emerged from a crowd and shot Oswald. Can you believe it? The man who was accused of killing the president was himself killed before he could even stand trial. Just two days after Kennedy's assassination, Oswald was being transferred from the city jail to the county jail. That's when Jack Ruby stepped forward and shot him. Oswald was rushed to the hospital, the very same hospital where Kennedy was taken. But the doctors couldn't save him. And just like that, the man accused of taking away the president was also gone. This sudden twist in events left people with more questions than answers. Was Oswald really the shooter? Did he act alone or was he part of a larger plot? And why did Ruby kill Oswald? Was it an act of patriotism or was there something more to it? These questions fueled the flames of conspiracy theories. Some believed Oswald was innocent and was set up to take the fall, while others thought he was part of a larger, more sinister plot. The truth, as they say, is often stranger than fiction. Remember, in order to unravel the full story, you need to dig deeper. So stay tuned as we continue to delve into the mysterious assassination of President John F. Kennedy in our next segment. And just like that, the man accused of taking away the president was also gone. So what did the investigators find out? After the tragic event of President John F. Kennedy's assassination, a special team was set up to dig into the details. This team was known as the Warren Commission, named after its leader, Chief Justice Earl Warren. They were given the task of uncovering all the facts related to this unfortunate incident. After careful examination of all the evidence and interviews with countless witnesses, the Warren Commission came to a conclusion. They determined that the shots which took the life of JFK were fired by one man, Lee Harvey Oswald. Yes, Oswald, the same man who was later shot by Jack Ruby. The commission's report stated that Oswald acted alone, meaning there was no second shooter, no larger conspiracy at play. But here's where things get a bit puzzling. Even after all their work, the Warren Commission was unable to determine Oswald's motive. They couldn't figure out why he would want to assassinate the president. Was it for fame? Was he angry with the government? Or was there some other reason that remains unknown? This question was left unanswered, adding another layer of mystery to an already confusing event. But many people weren't satisfied with this explanation. And can you blame them? The idea that one man, without a clear motive, could single-handedly assassinate the President of the United States seemed hard to swallow. And so, the stage was set for countless conspiracy theories to take root, theories that we will delve into in our next scene. What if there was more to the story? Some people certainly think so, and it's not hard to see why. The mystery surrounding the assassination of JFK has given birth to a multitude of conspiracy theories over the years. Now remember, these are just theories. We're not saying they're true or false, but they certainly make for an interesting conversation. One of the most enduring theories involves the idea of a second shooter. Some people believe that Lee Harvey Oswald couldn't have acted alone, and that there was another gunman involved. This theory is often backed up by the infamous magic bullet argument, 
suggesting that the bullet's trajectory was too complex for Oswald to have been the sole shooter. Then there's the theory that the government was involved. This theory often points to the fact that certain documents related to the assassination have been withheld by the U.S. government. Some people believe that these documents contain evidence of a larger conspiracy, possibly involving high-ranking officials. The delay in the release of these documents as recently as 2021, citing reasons like the COVID-19 pandemic, has only fueled this theory further. There are countless other theories, from the involvement of the mafia to international espionage, to even the suggestion that JFK's own vice president had a hand in his assassination. Each theory has its own set of believers and skeptics, and each adds another layer to the enigma that is JFK's assassination. It's important to remember that while these theories are fascinating, they are just that. Theories. None of them have been proven beyond a shadow of a doubt. They exist in the realm of speculation and intrigue, adding to the allure of one of the most shocking events in American history. The truth, it seems, is still out there. Even after all these years, there are still questions. Just like an unsolved puzzle, the story of JFK's assassination continues to keep us on our toes. Picture this, a box filled with secrets. This box holds thousands of documents, all related to that fateful day in November of 1963. These documents, folks, are yet to see the light of day. They're locked away, hidden from the public eye. Why, you might wonder? Good question. The official statement is that these papers need more time to be reviewed and researched. Some even say that the delay is because of the challenges brought on by a global pandemic. But many people can't help but wonder, could these files hold the answers we've been searching for all these years? Could they finally reveal the true motive behind the assassination of one of America's most beloved presidents? So far, the files that have been released haven't given us any major revelations. They're like pieces of a jigsaw puzzle that don't quite fit together. But that doesn't mean we stop looking, right? We continue to hope that one day, the full picture will become clear. Yet, there's a twist in the tale. The decision to delay the release of these documents wasn't taken lightly. The powers that be argued that the protection of national security interests outweighs the immediate public interest in disclosure. This, of course, has only added fuel to the fire of conspiracy theories. It's made people even more curious, more desperate to know the truth. What's in those documents? Do they hold the key to finally solving the mystery of JFK's assassination? Or will they only deepen the enigma? We can only speculate, we can only wait, and hope, that one day, we'll have the answers. And, so the mystery of who killed President Kennedy, and why, continues to intrigue us. But, what does this all mean for us today? As we reflect on the tragic events of November 22, 1963, it's clear that President John F. Kennedy's assassination has had a profound impact on American society and culture. This shocking incident, the theories that surround it, and the lingering uncertainty have all contributed to a significant shift in how we perceive our world. The assassination served as a catalyst, sparking a wave of conspiracy theories that have only grown in the decades since. These theories, often fueled by the withholding of certain files related to the event, have created an atmosphere of skepticism and mistrust. We've become more questioning of the information we're given, more doubtful of the narratives we're told. This culture of mistrust isn't isolated to JFK's assassination, though. It's permeated our society, affecting how we view everything from politics to science. It's led us to question authority, to challenge the status quo, and to seek truth amidst a sea of misinformation. But it's not all negative. This heightened skepticism has also led to a thirst for knowledge and an increased desire to uncover the truth. It's fostered a sense of curiosity and a drive for transparency that's resulted in important revelations and progress. The enduring myths and unresolved questions surrounding JFK's presidency and assassination reveal more than just the details of a single event. They cast a spotlight on our collective perceptions, our historical narratives, and the complexities of our society. So, as we continue to delve into these mysteries, let's remember, it's not just about uncovering the past, but understanding how it shapes our present and influences our future. If you want to explore more mysteries and intriguing stories like this, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Who knows what we might uncover next?